satellite. Let's say I want to make a space station for my cat. How could I do that? I could start with buying one of these. Place the cat inside, lock the door. We're not gonna worry about temperatures or oxygen for now, it's only a test flight. Now, how can we make it float? Oh, I have an idea, we could attach it to a helium balloon. Let's see if this works. If this works, I'm gonna be famous, I'm gonna call it International Cat Station. It seems to work so far, the altitude is increasing. My cat seems to be cold right now. I think next time we need to add gold foil. Well, I think I did it. That's how you make a satellite. Oops, Houston, we have a problem. Not that big of a problem, I have a second cat. Damn, that didn't work. Let's look at how satellites are made. So what we've got here is the, the overall service module, or the startings of the service module of the telecommunication satellite. What you can see uh, are two tanks of an eventual four tank propellant system. Uh, on the outside, in, in several locations, we've got seven smaller uh, thrusters, and we have a main engine, a liquid apogee engine, which is fitted inside the, the cone. The service module carries four fuel tanks, all placed around the central core. Each fuel tank can withstand an internal pressure equal to being over 200 meters underwater. That's it, we need big tanks that can take the pressure and fill those with helium. Not propellant, helium. Imagine they can lift the cat and take the pressure. Would the altitude keep increasing? Helium rises up because it's lighter than air. But if you look at the properties of the thermosphere, you will see that it's made out of mostly helium. So in theory, if you get there, at some point it should start to float. Yay! Our cat is floating! Now we need to get it in orbit. Well, I think that's a pretty simple one. If you look at the wind streams at higher altitudes, or even at most altitudes, you will see that it makes a big circle above the equator. There is this weather tool that allows you to see the wind streams on the flat earth map, and you can clearly see it makes a big circle. There are also people that circumnavigated the Earth with a balloon and used those wind streams. It's also important we prevent the satellite from spinning. When I spin my cat around very fast, she gets dizzy and throws up. We don't want that. So I was thinking maybe we can use the solar panels like ailerons on an airplane and take more advantage of the wind. Or just to be sure, we can add a tank of rocket fuel and some nozzles on every side. Well. That's how I would make a spaceship. That's ridiculous! Yes it is, but it's probably a lot cheaper than NASA. And I bet it's also a lot more fun. For cats. But I don't take credit for it. All the credit goes to this guy. He invented the satellites. We're talking today with Arthur Clark, the man responsible for communication satellites. Mr. Clark, you said uh, not too long ago that in terms of communications, we're still in the semaphore and uh, smoke stage. Would you put that in context, please? Well, as far as the home is concerned, we have TV and... Uh... Hello, my friends. This is a very, very, very important video because there is a guy on YouTube, Jeff Stewart. He's the guy from Debunk the Debunkers. He's saying that I'm killing my cats and it's not true. Well, I mean, most of it is not true. Let me show you a part of his video. Hello, I'm here to prove the globe with Geoshifter's cats. This is Frisky. He died horribly in a weather balloon accident trying to prove the flat earth. That's wrong man, that's wrong. I never killed Frisky. She's still here running around. Now it's true that I got a cat who got killed on a weather balloon. But you know, that cat, she lived for science. She died for science. She always wanted to be an explorer. And that's the risk, you know. Things like that can happen. It's sad, but it can happen. You have to understand that I'm not responsible. You see, I made the cat sign some papers, so she was responsible for what she did. Please don't blame me. Anyway, it's the only truth you will find in this video, because all the other accusations he makes, it's all false, it's not true. I don't have anything to do with it. When my other cat went to Mars, she returned safely, man, and she loved it, she loved it. She said the space food was awesome. She also loved the view. 
she lost one leg in a small accident, but that's not a big problem. She doesn't care so much about it. So please, to all my subscribers, go to Jeffy's video. I will put the link in the description and go tell him that GeoShifter loves cats and that he would never ever hurt a cat or kill a cat. Also subscribe to him because he has some pretty funny videos. And thanks for watching. Bye bye. Earth. Earth. NASA says NASA we go into space, which was basically a hoax. I have some unorthodox thoughts. Earth, Earth. is flat. 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 500 flat. years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat. Sorry, Neil. Try me. See if I think I have no opinion on your bullshit sci-fi fantasy. I have some unorthodox thoughts. Sci-fi fantasies. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Those who are able to see beyond the shadows and lies of their culture will never be understood, let alone believed by the masses. And I'm, I'm astonished. I wonder, what country am I living in? It's not the one I grew up in. It's like, am I living in? It's not the one I grew up in. It's like, am I living in? It's not the one I grew up in. Like, Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Uh, the pole, uh, Earth rotates, and the pole bobs up and down over tens of thousands of years, and we, and we oscillate like this the way a top does. Top does. Top does. Sci-fi fantasy. Top does, top does, top Sci -fi does. Fantasies. We're pleased to announce the discovery of Kepler 452b. Which was basically a hoax. Typically illiterate people of the world. Typically illiterate people of the world. Typically illiterate people of the Sci -fi world. Sci-fi fantasies. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. You feel. All the things that I used to believe, I can't even believe I believe them anymore. All the things that I used to believe, I can't even believe I believe them anymore. Flat Earth Society. Uh, it's you know, it's like it's like I it's like I just stopped believing in Santa Claus recently. Are you really somebody seeking the truth? We've been fed a lie. Our entire no, I want to call it a lie. We've been fed. It's a point of view thing, I think. We've been fed a. We've been. Earth has been misrepresented to us, so we've been fed this misrepresentation of our own planet. It's not actually a sphere. It's an. It's why that. Because Earth is flat, perfectly flat. Wait, 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 but you gotta know, let me just so you understand, but cosmically speaking, Earth is flat, 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 flat. flat. Roger, we copy. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way, it's like pear-shaped. sci-fi So, it turns out, the pear-shapedness is bigger than the height of Mount Everest above sea level. Sci-fi fantasies. Sorry, Neil. Try me. See if I think I have no opinion on your bullshit sci-fi fantasies. When I noticed, you know, the just total absence of the pictures of Earth from space, and and it, I still couldn't see the the forest for the tree. And we've all seen those pictures, those gorgeous pictures of a somewhat round planet. Planet Earth. My home, my place. Because the awakening, the realization of flat Earth is a big internal wave. Are you really somebody seeking the truth? Flat Earth clues, which really delves into the possibility that our human civilization is inside its own Truman type shell, like an enclosed system. Those people are not, not really in the mainstream. They, they must have been founding members of, of the Flat Earth Society. They, they would not have believed that the world was round. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Is flat. flat. Well, why, why a big secret? People are smart. They can handle it. 
But why, why the big secret? People are smart. They can handle it. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. With this small With this spacecraft, spacecraft, we could, we could, dare I say, dare I say change the world. Change the world. <laughs> Oblate. An official is an oblate spirit. That's what we call it. Sci fi fantasies. Not only that, it's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. And when we learn when that, we learn we'll that, know more we'll about, know more where, about we where we came from, how we all how got, got it. Sci fi fantasies. Ground control to Major Tom. Your circuit's dead. There's something wrong. Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you? Oh, yes. So wait, wait, wait. Do you think they're helping the cause or the movement so that they can get out from under their lines? Science. I don't understand. Just my job five days a week. NASA's approach to exploration is, um, is not Star Trek. It's not go where no man has gone before, as they say. Yes, but as a scientist, You're measuring your distance from the center of the Earth. From the very center of the Earth. Is that different from the center? I know. Is that different from the center? Is that different from the center? Earth is flat. Flat. But why, why the big so secret? People are smart. They can handle it. And that couldn't be more true. It's one thing to be told of the giant impenetrable dome but it's a whole different animal when you finally stand right next to it. Then the tough decisions have to be made. Do we keep the secret? And how far are we willing to go to keep the status quo? Once they decided to keep the secret, no expense was spared. The rapid progression of rocketry science had to be addressed quickly, and so the moon missions were created. Matt from the NASA channel was right in his thinking that you needed the moon mission event to stage a picture of the Earth from deep orbit. Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They have to have a good bead on them. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there. You felt it your entire splinter. that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, but it's there. But it's there. like a splinter in your mind. After this, there After is no turning back. You take the blue take pill. The, the story ends. Story end. You wake up in your bed and believe in whatever you want. Whatever you, want. you take the red take pill. The red you pill. You stay in Wonderland. In Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole is. Are you really looking for the answers no matter where they lead you? Or are you going to stay in your box, stay in your comfort zone? Just in case, somebody might say, oh, well, you're a flat earther, aren't you? Me, personally, I don't care what people say about me. All I'm offering, All I'm is, the offering is the truth. Nothing more. Nothing. You got that thing when the blue marble came out. Yeah, when it first came out, it, it was, you know, the White House sent a blurb out in a Twitter or whatever to everybody. You know, you get this blue marble, and you look at it at first, you know, like, eh, it's, it's an improvement over some of the other blue marbles. But then somebody... Uh, brilliant out there decided hey i'm gonna flip this thing upside down and as soon as they did this this the clouds are spelling sex yep you know, and you're like yep. come on when they put out the blue marble shot they made a point of saying oh yeah by the way this is the first blue marble shot we've done in 43 years and and, and, and the other one. yeah which helped the, the flat earth cause because everyone you know on that side was saying you know there are no pictures of the earth from space there's only one that they've ever said and people are going no no that's not true and then the white house and you know neil degrasse tyson comments i said oh yeah this is the second this is the second shot from space in 43 years was going and this doesn't bother anybody yes. so wait wait wait. do you think they're helping the cause or the movement so that they can get out from under their lines do you think you know they're giving little clues and well because they're still saying this is the real deal yeah they're saying that this is this is the ball earth we had any sort of moment that's akin to the uh, Apollo 8 Earthrise picture, it will change the world. And so when somebody asks me the same thing somebody asked you as far as what difference does it make, the difference is that we are living in a mental prison, first and foremost, created by people who are rich and powerful. And they're rich and powerful because they've put us all into this never-ending maze of go to work, 
pay your bills, pay your taxes, come home, um, watch TV, watch the news, keep up to date with what's going on in the world, and everyone is stuck in that rut. And then they're also told, here's the science, and if you believe this, you're smart. You are intelligent, you're an intellectual if you believe what's in these science books. So you got a bunch of people walking around thinking they're smart, telling others who start to think of the world the way it really is that they're stupid, and it creates a, a place that's just not somewhere anybody wants to live. How much do you care what your friends and family think about you or say about you? What's more important, the way you're perceived by the world or the way you really are? And how are you really when it gets down to it? Are you really somebody seeking the truth or are you just putting up an image and only willing to get to a certain place? Planet Earth. My home, my place. But the exciting thing is that I think we will send humans in the near future to Mars. Five, six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. I said something about how beautiful the space ships are. And he says, uh, yeah, it's for show. And I said, what? He says, it's for show. I said, what are you talking about? And he says, there's no space. I said, what? He said, no, it's all for show. And he said, you cannot believe what you see. You can't always believe what you see. You can't always believe what you see. That's right. But he said, I'm getting out of it too, just as soon as I can. That's what he said to me. Because it's a bunch of hollow balloon. I never heard that terminology in a long time. Okay, we've had a problem here. This is Houston saying again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a problem. Because it's a bunch of hollow balloon. I never heard that terminology in a long time. And they're recycling this photo, just changing up the cloud cover a little bit, and telling you that that's Earth. And 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. And so this is actually humanity stepping forward and saying, you know what? The mind control doesn't work anymore. Not only does the mind control not work anymore, we don't care what your media says about us anymore. We don't care what your psychologist and psychiatrist try to say. All the facades are falling away now. There's no sign of life. Boys, it's a nervous sound. I, I really don't care if people call me a flat earther. Can you hear me now? This is planet Earth. You're looking at planet Earth. But I do have to say that when you stack the evidence up, the globe really starts to disappear. And the globe just simply doesn't hold water. The globe just simply doesn't hold water. My head is stuck on something precious, let me know. If you're coming down to land. That's why Rob Skiba, he has done literally months and months and months of investigation into the flat earth. And he can't get out of the whole rabbit hole. Because once you start to uncover one layer of the onion, you realize it really goes so deep. It really goes so deep.
message to all the conspiracy theorists. I think you're batshit crazy with this new theory that everybody keeps coming out with, with the flat earth theory. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but I'm, I, I can't believe that anybody would think that. You know, what makes you think that the earth is flat? When I've been in aircrafts loads of times and looked down and I can see the curve. You know, I, I think this is like some sort of form of controlled opposition here. Tell a story, see how far that people will believe this shit. That's funny, I had someone sending me some information about the Earth being flat too. In multiple messages on YouTube and Facebook. No, I think it's a bit of a thing going on. It's suddenly because this whole idea of the flat earth has flooded the alternative scene at the moment. I'm, li I'm literally convinced it's a intelligence services uh, shall we say, a sabotage weapon. So when they actually come to pointing us out, they can say things like, you know, we're pointing out something that's really serious. They can turn around and say, but look, these are all the same thoughts. They believe the air is flat. And flat earth, in my opinion, is a topic that takes serious research and you have to disconnect yourself from everything you thought you knew and all of your religious beliefs and everything like that and really approach this from a scientific perspective, but not a pseudo-scientific perspective, not a perspective of coming from textbook information, but coming from a place and a perspective that you're actually out there using tools of technology to really try to understand what is this world that we're actually living on. Is it a dome? Is it a big ball floating through space? Is it a hologram? See, many people would agree that it's a hologram, but then they can't take it a step further and say, well, you know what? If it's a hologram, it's probably not really three-dimensional like we believe it is. A hologram can look three-dimensional, but it's actually just a projection. So if this whole world is a hologram, the whole universe for that matter, that's what mainstream scientists are saying. Now, mainstream scientists say a lot of things that are not actually accurate, so you take that for what it's worth. But they're saying that it's a holographic universe, and they've actually found zeros and ones within the fabric of space-time itself. That tells me that we're living in a matrix. The matrix has to be housed somewhere. It's housed in the dome. That is our world. And I've often likened the enclosed world theory to a video game. You can look outside of a window in a video game and stare into the vastness of the world that's outside. But if you can hack the video game and actually get behind the wall where the supposed window is, it's nothing but empty space. Because the programmers didn't program anything outside of those borders. All they programmed was what your avatar can perceive while playing through the well-constructed areas of the video game. Is our world actually the same? What's beyond the ice wall? Those are the questions that we're really trying to get to the bottom of. But in order to get to the bottom of those questions, we have to first do our own experimentation. We have to first investigate for ourselves. We have to use our own eyes and our own ears. Now, I know that's so scary to everybody out there. No, don't make me use my own eyes and my own ears. I want to trust what these people have written in a book and have told me is true because I don't want to actually believe my own senses. See, when you phrase it like that, do you, do you realize how ridiculous that sounds?
NASA, NASA, NASA. General Charles Bolden, head of NASA, has to say about NASA politics. All right, politics. it's a worldwide thing. NASA, 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 NASA. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Boy, this agency sucks. Yeah. NASA. We do suck in some <laughs> in some terms. Page one story. Um, sucks. Yeah, well, <laughs> we do suck in some <laughs> in some terms. Christoph, why do you think that Truman has never come close to discovering the true nature of his world? We accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. It's as simple as that. It's okay if they give us a picture of Pluto that was supposedly taken with this high-powered satellite that was passing by that just happens to have the silhouette of the pl a dog Pluto from the Disney from from Walt Disney from the Disney cartoon Pluto. I don't even have the words to describe the fraud that is taking place here. Like, who is that stupid to believe that the planet Pluto actually just coincidentally has a landmass on it that looks identical to the Walt Disney character Pluto? Come on, Pluto! 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 You go! Uh, my dog, Pluto! <laughs> A lot of these images that you get in a lot of these um, pictures are nothing more than that. They're just pictures, they're CGI, they're computer graphics, and, you know, I can understand why in the 70s or 80s this might have been uh, something that was hard for people to understand, but in today's world, we all have computers with pretty impressive graphic capabilities on our desks at home, and uh, you can actually just play with a paint program and get pretty, uh, pretty similar results to what NASA shows you. Uh, same thing with the Pluto pictures that just recently came back. Same thing with these pictures of Mars. Uh, these things are, are meant to um, give you a fantasy world uh, and take you away from where you actually live and what's actually important, which is right here. You know, we don't need another place to go. We don't need a place to inhabit like Mars. We should worry about all the issues and the problems that are here. And then once we've mastered this, well, then go ahead and look out there if you want. But uh, I think we're jumping the gun a little bit by uh, talking about inhabiting Mars. Why is it that right after the Antarctic Treaty was signed, nobody was allowed to go to Antarctica after that, and then they actually did a high-altitude nuclear test called Operation Fish Bowl once they realized where the dome actually was? Planet Earth. And from there, it's just been, uh, like you said, down the rabbit hole. Uh, I think it helps explain almost everything. Uh, it just made everything clear, made um, me feel more free, made us feel more free, uh, gave us a better connection with the infinite. Um, and I think that it really just started with opening our minds uh, and really no, no longer taking, like you said, into account what other people think, which is the least important thing that there is. And if you were going to fool somebody, uh, probably a good thing to do would be to get a bunch of people with you uh, to laugh at that person if they uh, thought a certain way and that's exactly what's happened in today's world is there's certain topics that if you bring up you will be laughed at and be told you're an idiot if you think that the moon landing was a hoax if you think that 9-11 was your government if you think the earth is flat uh, you're an idiot so if you start looking a little deeper into why is it that there's certain topics you can't talk about you might be surprised at the end of that tunnel Right, right. And it makes you wonder, what is the purpose of this cover-up? Go ahead, Truth. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, there's sacred cows that you just do not touch. And if you do, then you're forever known as a kook or a crazy person. It completely destroys everything that everyone knows. It's just a fantastical, mythological uh, idea that we've all been taught is true. And I understand it breaks down. You know, it takes a while to... to to accept it and to really break it down and it'll never be something that you can just tell somebody and they'll go oh yeah that makes sense now uh, they will they're going to cuss at you and they're going to tell you you're wrong but just putting that seed in their mind i think is the key over the next week two weeks three weeks people will start to see the world differently and it will start to register with them that uh oh there is a chance that there's a reason why there's a globe in every kindergarten classroom you know what I found odd, though, is during this enlightening or awakening and realizing um, that the Earth is most likely flat. But uh, I, I, I think the enclosed theory makes a lot more sense than anything else. But when I first started to talk about this, 
most of our listeners wrote very, very positive emails. Everybody was on board going, you know what? I've been looking into this. I've been feeling this. There has been this great awakening. And it seemed to have started, at least for me and the people around me, around January or February of this year. Um, as a child, not having any brainwashing whatsoever, I couldn't make any sense of it. The only thing that didn't make sense to me as a kid, and I can still remember this to this day, I never understood the spinning. And I would question it in, you know, second grade and get told I was, you know, I was confused or I didn't understand the way it worked. And I would stare at the moon or stare at the sun and just say, I don't understand what they mean by we are spinning. It didn't make any sense. Still to this day, it doesn't make any sense. There is one bit of spinning footage from NASA, a 12 hour time lapse, but it doesn't show the clouds moving, which is very odd because clouds don't stay still for 12 hours. So we haven't got any footage of the Earth spinning, even though there's the Hubble telescope, we're told, a uh, space station and 20 to 30,000 satellites. Very strange. And no one can feel the spin. You can feel earthquakes pretty well, you can't feel the Earth spinning. life on the one hand and you on the other. It's all the same. But you see, you can't tell people that. And just by telling, get them to see it. it just in, in exactly this way, you, the people who know that the earth is flat can't be reasoned with. People who believe that the Bible is the literal word of God, absolutely impossible to reason with them at all, because they know it is so. So in the same way, we tend to know that we are all separate poor little needs, and that we are in need of salvation or something. And we know this. And so somebody says, well, you are not really that. You know that that feeling of separateness is an illusion. Well, it's all very nice in theory, but I don't feel it. So what will you do? What will you do with a person who is convinced that the earth is flat? No way of reasoning with him. If it's for some reason important that he discovers that the earth is round, you've got to play a game with him. You've got to play a trick on him. You tell him... Great. The Earth is flat. Let's go and look over the edge. Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was definitely an e-ticket. When I first heard this flat earth subject, I dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But more recently, at the beginning of 2015, I ran across a few flat earth videos again. And while looking into the fake moon photos circulating around, I saw that people were claiming that the images from earth from space were fake as well. Pretty soon the flat earth subject became viral online. And after looking at the Apollo missions one night and coming to the conclusion that they were nothing more than a huge con game, it jarred my memory about something. And for a very specific reason, I decided to look deeply into the flat earth without just dismissing it blindly as so many do. Why did I look into it this time? Well, I do pray for knowledge and wisdom and discernment, but maybe the recent Apollo footage I watched helped. However, I live near a very large lake, Lake Ontario, and I happen to remember going to the beach as a kid and looking across the lake and seeing New York State coast off in the distance. I never ever thought anything about it ever, except I remember it being there when I went to the beach. Now, I've been to that beach a hundred times over the years, and once this topic gained more prominence in early 2015, the first video I saw explained the curvature of the Earth and what it's supposed to be in inches per mile. And it resonated with me because I remember that I could see clear across the lake to the other coast, something that broke all the sphere Earth rules. So with NASA fakery on my mind and the memory of seeing this coastline that supposedly was too far below the horizon for me to be able to see it due to the curvature of the Earth, I re-examined the Flat Earth Theory. And as unbelievable as it seemed, it started to make a lot of sense, especially since I did distinctly remember being able to see that far coast basically any time I was at my local beach. And as I've said, I've been there hundreds of times over the years. But even so, I went back to the beach recently and stood at the shore. I looked south and guess what? 
I could see the New York State coastline just like I remember. Now I googled the distance and it was approximately 36 miles. I learned what the curvature of the Earth is supposed to be exactly at that distance. And according to the people that believe in the sphere, I found out that the coast should have been buried below my ability to see it by almost 900 feet. That part of the New York State coast had a top elevation of less than 300 feet. So that left at least a huge 600 foot discrepancy. And even more because I could see some of the height of the far shore. Was something really wrong with the reality that they've been selling us ever since we were born? Well, I ended up becoming a little fixated on proving or disproving the concept. And at first, I truly thought disproving the flat Earth would be rather easy. I thought there had to be a reasonable explanation why I could see so far beyond the so-called curved barrier. I learned about light refraction and superior mirages. I learned about perspective and horizons. I learned about how our eyes work. I viewed dozens of similar experiences on YouTube. I listened to experts and people who thought they had logical but spherical explanations. In fact, I tried for a few months to debunk the concept. I just couldn't. The more I looked into it, the more sense it made and the less likely that the sphere model we've been spoon-fed since birth was a reality. It's just flat out wrong. And as more people shared their experiences and proofs online, it only added to my growing, pretty much unwavering belief that the world is not what we've been told. And learning about how our eyes work and how perspective work helps a lot with understanding sunrises and sunsets and ships disappearing hull first at sea and other supposed sphere earth proofs. I can't say for certain what shape the earth is or how big it is, or if there's an Antarctic ring or a barrier beyond it, or if it's an infinite plane. Maybe everything we theorize is not complete. There are so many possibilities that it blows the mind. And the flat earth has no real complete standard model because it's all based on us finding out things for ourselves. We agree on the facts and certain basics, but the rest is only hypothetical even if it seemingly makes sense. And as the evidence mounts for both the flat earth and against the sphere, I wanted to create a special place where folks can learn and share what they've learned with other supporters. Differences of opinion are certainly going to come forth and should be expressed openly. But remember that the goal of my videos and their corresponding thread is to provide the opportunity to use each of us to learn and grow in any area that any of us has a problem in. If there is a thing you can't understand, then ask. Someone will have an opinion and we can go from there. If you have a point to make against what is considered an accepted flat earth fact, please provide any relevant links or supporting proofs or videos. I am currently under the impression that the entire space program, even the low Earth orbit and all that is there, is really just a sleight of hand trick by a group of illusionists that have swindled the public, the governments of the world, the media, and us into believing a lie. Everybody, a small group of corporations and cabals have almost complete control over the entire financial, educational, high-level governmental and media systems, leaving it up to real armchair scientists and normal people that can critically think and recreate experiments themselves to independently prove or just prove any accepted line of thought about our reality. Look, I ain't the smartest man on the flat earth, but I ain't no dummy. I'm educated and I never ever questioned or ever thought of an alternative to a sphere earth until this year. It never entered my mind to question this part of our reality at all, ever. But now I question everything. I'm a Christian and I think I see the big picture. Thanks, Thanks for watching my video. If you'd like to see more proof against the heliocentric model and proof against the sphere, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if there's anything you disagree with, Make sure you leave a note below explaining exactly why. Remember folks, follow the golden rule. God loves you. We'll talk soon.
esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's a rather a game. Lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo misma, tienes la llave privada. What is very important to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego, imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then, to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad lo que, lo que te da la gana en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin, uh, the amount, whatever you want, in, that, in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y and this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cl clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me. And uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First, I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later, explain. Después, lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret 
uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the this part of the game. as uh, la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons eh, la gente tiene cuatro dedos y solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in the Simpsons people have a four fingers and only God has five fingers? Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde, puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be a big help. Uh, no solo para... Bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti. Si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So, uh, it's... This is the game part. If uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person. But if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out. And it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada. Y si, por ejemplo... Okay, first translate. Print and not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin. ¿Qué es Bitcoin? Bitcoin es la primera moneda digital descentralizada. Los Bitcoins son monedas digitales que puedes enviar a través de Internet. Comparado con otras alternativas, Bitcoin tiene numerosas ventajas. Los Bitcoins son transferidos directamente de persona a persona a través de la red sin pasar por un banco u otro intermediario. Esto significa que las comisiones son mucho menores, puedes usarlo en cualquier país, tu cuenta no puede ser congelada y no hay prerequisitos o límites arbitrarios. 
Miremos cómo funciona. Los bitcoins son generados en todo internet por cualquiera con un programa gratuito llamado Minero de Bitcoin. Crear bitcoins requiere una cierta cantidad de trabajo para cada bloque de monedas. Esta cantidad se ajusta automáticamente por la red, para que los bitcoins siempre sean creados a un ratio predecible y limitado. Tus bitcoins se guardan en tu billetera digital, que te resultará familiar si usas banca digital. Cuando transfieres bitcoins, una firma electrónica es añadida. Pasados unos minutos, la transacción es verificada por el minero y es almacenada permanente y anónimamente por la red. El software de Bitcoin es completamente abierto y cualquiera puede revisar el código. Bitcoin está cambiando las finanzas de la misma manera que la web ha cambiado el periodismo. Cuando cualquiera tiene acceso al mercado global, florecen grandes ideas. Miremos algunos ejemplos de cómo los Bitcoins están usándose hoy en día. Puedes comprar videojuegos, regalos, libros, servidores y calcetines de alpaca. Existen varias casas de cambio donde puedes intercambiar tus bitcoins por dólares, euros y más. Los bitcoins son una gran forma para que pequeños negocios y autónomos reciban publicidad. No cuesta nada empezar a aceptarlos, no hay cargos o comisiones y recibirás negocio adicional de la economía bitcoin. Para tus primeros bitcoins y más información visita weusecoins.com